Echoed throughout the minds of the Dawi Zar is a legend of immeasurable power hidden deep under the mountains. A liquid magic so potent it can raise entire cities, leaving nothing but cinders and ash. Eager to exploit this power, the sorcerer prophets of Tsar Nagrund sought to reach the source of this demonic substance. The domain of their malign god, Hashut, the father of darkness. For centuries they dug, exhausting countless workers as they delved deeper than the mountain roots themselves. Two ashen moons ago, in the depths of the darkest pit, a discovery was made. A trickle of pure power, a crimson seam divining away through the rocky layers to where her shoot dwells. And so, it was bottled in a vessel of infernal design rushed to the surface through the fires of industry to the highest authority. In the council chambers of Drazoth the Ashen, it was presented. Roiling with unholy energy, its gloriously terrible glow glinted in the eyes of all who set their gaze upon it. The blood of her shoot. Far rarer than warpstone and gold, very few vials had ever been extracted from the mines. The key to limitless power. Hashut Abu Mazuma Zaras Darun Akminu Izbol. Drazoth, Lord of the Black Fortress, roared to the God of Darkness. And he replied. Ancient channels etched in rock flow with molten fury. A great drill shall be constructed, forged in the dread fires of the Darklands, imbued with strength to bore through the bedrock and breach a godly domain. Uswil Shababad. Lunda Krungran. The forge burns. The fires catch from the depths. The chaos dwarves will rise. Zana Grand, the center of power, but another grows to challenge it. For in the south lies the Black Fortress. Ruled by the exiled sorcerer Drazoth, it has recently come under threat from hungry migrating ogres. They pour forth from the mountains and should be stopped at all costs. Yet this threat will be of little consequence once the great drill is operational and fully powered. Izan Kazan Tajar Nachgrand Abdar Nurunleth Mbulma The launch site is made ready at a speed so furious, it becomes a mass graveyard for hundreds of exhausted workers. Expendable lives, for only the drill is of concern. 
The remaining construction must be imbued with dark sorcery. For the blood of Hushut lies not only in the darkest depths of the world, but in a godly domain where no mortal engine can reach it. Four dwarf relics are required, each to be corrupted in the forges of the demon smiths. Only then shall the drill summon power enough to shatter solid rock and the foundations of reality itself. As the abhorrent relics lie undiscovered, a sacrifice must be undertaken to gain Hashut's blessing and reveal their locations. So welcome everyone, Kostin here with Total War Warhammer 3, Chaos Dwarves, Realms of Chaos as Drazov Dashin. I am going to play the narrative campaign, it's the first proper uh, playthrough that I am aiming to complete with the Chaos Dwarves. I've done some attempts at campaigns, learned a lot about how to play them, but this is the first proper playthrough that I am going to do with them. Now, first off, let's take a look at the situation over here in the Darklands and see what has changed and what I'm going to have to deal with as Draz of the Ashen. First off, the Black Fortress is in Noblar country. Uh, it has Flayed Rock over here. I actually kind of expected it here, but there's a, instead an Ogre camp in this particular location. Then you get uh, the Scrap Towers here and, of course, the Haunted Forest as a single as a single settlement in this province, which basically makes it, worth it worthless for the Chaos Dwarves, because as the Chaos Dwarves, you want provinces with multiple regions in them, not just one. Because in one, what are you going to do? Are you just going to put a factory? Are you gonna, just going to put an outpost? Are you just going to put a tower? Well, you can, and it might be beneficial, but in the early game, not so much. It can be just a huge consumption of resources that you need for other things. So Nopalar country is really great because it has those four regions. So you can get uh, multiple factories or multiple outposts. I'll talk about the economic situation in just a bit. Then uh, to the south, you have the Plain of Bones. You have the Fortress of Orak where Emmerich starts. Now, interesting thing about Emmerich, Gorst, and Grimgor is that they only start with two uh, with one unit in their army and and themselves. Like, I'm guessing he has a unit of Dragon Princes. No, I'm pretty certain he has a unit of Dragon Princes. Um, but uh, he doesn't have any other units. I'm guessing this is to limit their p uh, power early on. Uh, slow them down somewhat, though. Keep in mind, they're still going to be able to recruit a lot of units. Now, I'm going to have to deal with Ogres, then o Gorst, and then likely Emmerich. Uh, to the north, of course, we have Greasus over here. Poor Greasus, he's now got two legendary lords of the Chaos Dwarves pretty close to him. That's going to be a problem, though. If you're playing the Chaos Dwarves, you might want to uh, ally Greasus. Uh, then we have the Wolflands, which obviously has Clan Rectus and two of these elements, and then um, the Moon Howlers over here and the Tower of Gre Grief. So the Moon Howlers control three settlements. In the Howling Wastes, we do have this minor Chaos Dwarf faction. That, by the way, hates everyone else. So, if you look at their situation, they really, really dislike you. <laughs> like, minus 40 starting situation, and it's going to get worse. But the settlements they have over here are really worth it. I'm guessing they just wanted to give a minor cast or faction uh, to fight. There's some really valuable stuff over here, in particular in the Tower of Gorgoth. You do have this structure which generates a lot of income and raw material. So that's an amazing landmark. And it also has gold over there. And then another landmark in the Sentinels, which gives you trade tariffs and maximum cargo capacity. Suffice so it to say, you're likely going to want to take the Howling Waste pretty damn quickly in your campaign. Then you have the Blasted Wastes, which are controlled by Zaytan. So Zaytan has a province with three settlements. And he starts at war with the Dripping Fangs. Hopefully, he'll defeat them pretty quickly. Further west, nothing really has changed. In Zornus School, we have Astrogoth. 
So he does start with the Fall of Doom. I'm not sure why Creative Assembly actually didn't include that particular detail. I mean, it was pretty clear from the preview. I was a bit surprised when on the map they showed, they didn't say that he was going to start with the Fall of Doom. So he does start with the Fall of Doom at war with the Darkland Orcs, or what remains of the Darkland Orcs over here. Uh, and then, of course, he's got Skaven, Kislev, etc. to the west in his situation. If you're playing his campaign, probably want to deal with the Skaven, then maybe take the Silver Pinnacle. Though, bear in mind, you can really benefit from taking the Howling Waste. Though, you might want to wait uh, with that particular situation. But yeah, uh, Astrogoth's probably the hardest campaign in Realms of Chaos, or the more limited campaign in Realms of Chaos. In Immortal Empires, probably a different situation. Then we got the Plains of Tsar. Now, I kind of expected Tsar Nagrun to actually only be... to be a province only with one settlement, and that's Tsar Nagrun. But no, they actually made it a great province. So all of these start uh, at max level. Plenty of structures over here in all of these settlements. Um, though, of course, some of these are kind of worthless, like uh, the factory combat. I mean, just this is a defensive action. They do start... Um, they do start with a, almost a full star echo over here under Gorf the Cruel, and then another one um, over here, another full army over here. And then the only major change that has to be talked about to the map is, of course, that endgame crisis that you start with in the game on both Realms of Chaos and Immortal Empires. Yes, I am considering Grimgor Ironhide an endgame crisis. You're going to have to deal with him in... Pretty much every campaign as the Chaos Dwarves, there is no avoiding that particular situation. Let's let's be very, very clear on that. If you think you're escaping the Wrath of Grimgor, you've got another thing coming over here. And he starts in a nerfed state in Realms of Chaos. In Immortal Empires, he's pretty damn crazy. So with Drazov, we have an army of some laborers, Goblin, and one unit of orc laborers, one infernal guard with fire glaives, one cast dwarf blunderbuss unit, one kadai reborn unit, and we also uh, start with an infernal castellan unit. The faction wide benefits are minus 10% armament class for all unit capacity and 10% armament output. Also, just going to start getting that strip mine over there in flayed rock. Strip mines are Expensive, gold-wise. I did actually expect that um, the cast dwarf structures would all cost materials. Because you do have a baseline level of material. And that money would instead be spent on units. But no, you spend a lot of money for, for the outposts which you need in order to get armaments. And influence is gained while well, by owning a lot of settlements. Specifically, towers are going to gen are gonna generate you conclave influence uh the most conclave influence because they start at two and they get higher after that. So over here, just going to out resolve this particular battle and I obviously can go with a bit of casualty replenishment. Let's just go for that. Generally speaking, when it comes to battles, you want to get laborers, but that's a pretty pathetic amount of laborers there at the very start. And here I would lose all of these labor units, but I don't care about them anyway. Now I'm going to occupy this as a factory, uh, simply because, and get a hobgoblin mustering camp in the tower. It won't, I won't keep it, but it will be a start. And then get two dwarf warriors with gray weapons. And because of the armament cost reduction, I can from turn one start getting a third warrior unit, so I'll get some regular. Uh, Chaos Dwarf units. Get yeah, Rune Marcher, get the Inspiring Presence, get Mobility with the Infernal Castellan, and research wise, I'll start. Um, I'll start with, I'm saying, Labor Codes, because that's going to give me more labor post battle. The way you can see the Chaos Dwarves is that they're a grower race, in the sense that they get stronger the more you play them, especially if you play them well, but they always have a lot of vulnerabilities in their empire and that's something you're gonna Don't have to be aware of now i'm gonna go over here to these guys and well maybe wait actually for them to lose some territory although it should be pointed out that He's drifting fangs are the guys that zaytan starts at war with 
So he's probably going to do a lot of damage to the Dripping Fangs. I'm not quite That's eager to idea. declare war on Clan Rictus from the very first turn of my campaign. Now with the labor I have, and I have 655, I am just going to get 10 Conclave Influence. Uh, these commandments over here are going to be the main ways you spend labor, really. Beyond just needing them to occupy your structure, uh, your structure. So you can gain some money from labor. Basically, if you can get 200 laborers from post-battle loot, go for that because it's 1500 gold. And I don't. And many times I found that you'll probably gain more money by just getting the labor force and then selling them, uh, than just um, than uh, than just uh, going for the extra gold uh, post battle. Legendary, very hard, by the way. In case anyone's wondering. So more captives, and we also get the quest to get Gordas. We just need. Eight hobgoblin units in our much. army. Whoa. Now over here, I'm gonna move Drazif over, uh, over here, and so we're going to recruit two units of uh, sneaky gets, one unit of archers, and then we're gonna move ahead. Now there's an ogre camp here that I am going to destroy. Okay, so we get the quest. Now, why can't he move? Um, now, I could wait the turn, but I also kind of want to destroy that camp. So, instead, what I'm going to do is get an overseer, get the concerned aspect, destroy the camp. Go to the Infernal Castle and get Survivalist. And move over here in the Scrap Towers camp. Now, if I not resolve this battle, I'll just take too many casualties, so let's fight them manually. So here is the ogre camp. Let's position these guys over here. Ogre camps are pretty hard to defend. It's a lesson I learned. The hard way, you could say. Let's get the Infernal Castellan. Pew pew! <laughs> Basically. Now, I just want to lure them here. Here they come. Another unit incoming. Alright, are there any more ogre units there? No, not by the looks of it. So let's just move everyone above here. Right, 
pull him back. And that's basically the last unit. Or is it? Apparently not. All right. Send that everyone in. So apparently there's more ogre units. I think there's just one more. All right, take that tower then. Is that unit? There we go. There he is. Oh, you bastard. Done. How very fancy of Drazif. Let's just get that replenishment. We should have enough movement range there. And over here I'm just going to get another archer unit. And um, get firing drills because that's going to affect both hobgoblin units and regular units as well gonna get the tallest towers or i could get yeah let's just get that upkeep benefit over there control is of course important but not necessarily at this particular stage so i need more labor there's the labor Alright, so we got some units over here. Bit of damage, sure. And we're gonna occupy this one as an outpost. Let's get rid of those. And get more hobgoblin units for him. Maybe another archer unit. Now, I'm actually just going to try and focus on his range skill line. I have some materials over here. 67, 67. let's get more Conclave influence, and that unlocks, uh, that unlocks the Tower of Tsar. I think for a moment we want that casualty replenishment. So there is a bunch of tower seats over here. Some are more useful than others. On the sorcery district, the casualty replenishment one is the only useful one. The other ones, I mean, the armament cost is important, but it's not so important early on in your campaign. What's really more important is the machinator, um, the machinator as well as the console benefit. And then finally the blacksmith one. Everything else, I mean, it's useful. Other stuff is useful, but it isn't crucial to prioritize. Now, one of the things to mention about the cast orbs is when you're playing them, you really don't want to just build something every turn. Because things are expensive. Now, these guys are just rank 1. 
All right, so that's the cafe and caravan. Unfortunately, it's not the cafe and caravan in a position that I'm going to be able to take advantage of. So, all right, so there's Gordas. We also get military convoys available. All right, so Gorst is over here. And we're just going to keep force marching this army over here. And we're going to... Now, I think sending a convoy is the smart thing to do. See what um, we can do. You will not go to her be repelled, Dawisa, but also obliterated. Yes, yes, all very fancy. All right, so she's not really going to like. All right, so she only will pay me for okay. So that's a minor caste warrior Static faction that's generally going to be wiped out, so I'm... I'm going to tenderize you before I eat that. Clearly. Make sure you tenderize it real good, because you're going to regret your life choices, Greases. Believe me. Alright, so that's enough to hire a caravan. We can get... Damn. Okay, so that's a bunch of... Let's get the war mach um, machinist. What choices do we have? So we can go with Drakenhof. Everything else is too far away. We can either go for that. Yeah, I think it's going to be Drakenhof. Go to the limit. We need a labor force right now. Alright, so that's finished. And then I'm going to go into sorcery and get the palace towers. Okay. Now that second army is going to fill an important role. And oh, you guys were stupid. And stupidity has its price. Okay, I am going to put this army into force march, move it here, and then we strike. Why is this important? Because I can use this. Or I can just auto resolve this entire thing and not fight the battle and just eliminate Gorst. I think I'd rather go with that, to be honest. Um. There are pros and cons. The con. Wow, you see it right there. Holy shit, that's a lot of labor. Sure. How much movement range? Um, okay, that is way more than enough. So, I'll resolve this. Sack it. No, it's not worth it. <laughs> okay. So, we got materials. We're gonna up upgrade the Black Fortress over here. Upgrade that as well. And over here, we're going to... I'm going to transfer some labor over from these provinces. Because that's a lot of labor that I just have there. I might get the rebellion. Let's go all the way here. Okay. Uh, so, I can get some money. Get the money back. But, first off, I'm going to get... That conclave influence, conclave influence. 
Cinderbrage. And what's a uh, tiny rebellion now and then, right? Alright, so now I'm generating a fair amount of materials over here. And I've gone for the income building, get the final point in firing drills. I'm not going to recruit any units here. He's gained a level, so we're going to give him Spiring Presence. Now, Casualty Replenishment for the Cast Orbs doesn't work in the same way you might think. They do have Gordas who can give Fan Casualty Replenishment, and yeah, obviously I'm going to go with that. And Elusive, Bloody Blade. Uh, but usually speaking, the Cast Orbs, their Casualty Replenishment comes more so from... Uh, actually, I'm just going to restart that, go with sign, uh, Cinder Blast Shell. Their casualty replenishment comes more so from their faction effect. So they get research. Like if we go look like into military, we get 5% casualty replenishment. The Tower of Zar gives you 6. Gordas gives you an additional number. And every other lord, with the exception of your ledger lord, has a skill that can give them 5%. Or some version of it, basically. Though you don't necessarily want to take that, because there's other benefits as well in that situation. You also get the... Logisticon over here, which can go up to 6%. And it's in the first line, so that's important. But Casualty Replenishment for the Cast Dwarves, while certainly not the best in the entire world, is is also still just pretty decent. Now, one of the things that is lacking for the Cast Dwarves, unfortunately, um, one of the things that's absolutely lacking for the Cast Dwarves is a commandment to increase corruption. Because we don't have that. That is a bit of a problem. Now, it's not a problem when you're dealing with provinces that have... Right, let's find our own path. Alright, so the caravan arrived. Oh, that's a Cafean caravan that arrived there. So what do I want to do with him? Good question. Let's merge these two. And I think we're going to move on to the Moon Howlers right now. Using the casualty replenishment that we've gained for our own benefit. Okay. And over here, we'll actually reduce that. Except. And get that uh, control benefit over there. Get an additional benefit of control. And you know what? Over here, I think I'm just going to wait until they're at the rebellion stage, get the rebellion, deal with the rebellion, stabilize the situation. That's going to be the approach I'm going to take. Alright, three turns, and then I get the new labor force. There's a bunch of benefits from getting a huge amount of laborers. We can get trade tariffs, but I'm not trading with anyone right now. We can get to the call to war. Let's start working on that. I need more materials. I want to upgrade the port over here so I can get the factory. Though here's the thing. I'm not really interested in armament production here. I'm interested in income. Or I could actually switch it to armament production pretty, pretty quickly. Getting armaments is important early on in a campaign All right so cross clubs oh one of the things i have realized there are some skaven over here i was just reminded of that particular uh, particular fact so let's just improve that and get a bit of income over here and get more materials Slave situation is not particularly great. 
Income situation is also not particularly great. The dragon blooded. Do not okay. think that you can talk your way out of destruction. I believe I can. Natural or yeah. Celestial ancestor. Ready to defend. Hold, master. Dark. So. Ready. So there are the war with the foe. Onward. You may. Talakmas. Uzma Kazu. Unodokna Tarun. Fadumlet Astra. Struggling to deal with some green skins. Hashut. Windshaper. But I want to deal with this cave over here. There we go. So just give it a couple of turns. The Vampire Rebellion will spawn. We get an additional seat over here. So usually speaking, I would say the materials is worth it. But yeah, let's go with the materials get that capacity up and running over here in the campaign hmm all right we got a bunch of skaven over here but we can win it we got siege after all Okay, well, this is an amazing situation. You give me a Dreadquake Mortar and this, like, screw you, basically, more or less. Like, just look at these things. Okay. All I see are dead Skaven. That is all. Yeah, that hurts. It's kind of hilarious because it's got the skull cracker attached to it. So it can actually do pretty damn well in melee. The problem is ammo. Here it comes. Skaven say they have nuclear weapons. The Chaos Dwarves respectfully disagree. You have, you have lost your right to life. That's all I'm gonna say. So huge that an ogre has to load it. Here it comes. See if they can actually shoot. Okay, that's the entire enemy army. What the hell is that? Try not to lose a single unit here. Oh, you're not getting away, my dudes. We got the pain train coming in. Oh, 
All right, the size of victory. I feel every Skaven, every uh, Cast Dwarf campaign should start with the Dreadquake Mortar. That's just my view. Alright. So new research is ready. Let's uh, get this particular. Okay. Yes, today me, tomorrow the world, and then the whole universe will belong to Greece's. That would that is a biblical amount of rats. <laughs> Holy crap. Thankfully they're all clan rats. Though and Skaven slaves. Though just bear in mind this ain't gonna be a, a walk in the park. That yeah, game, you sure I can handle this? Cause I ain't so sure. <laughs> That's a bit much, don't you think? Okay. So we got some choke points over here. But I would be stupid to use them. On the other hand, I can deploy all of these guys over here. And then just fall back over here at the top. Wait, what? Oh, oh wait, yeah, yeah. Haven't clicked the star about battle button just yet. <laughs> that was a bit silly, though. <laughs> I gotta say. Oh, well, keep in mind, there will be clan rats. No, uh, spawning. No. Or will there be? This isn't the province with high scale and corruption. Greases will deal with that little, uh, dealt with that little problem for me. But still. <laughs> I mean, it's like... I kind of feel like Tretch is the easier foe <laughs> to deal with. No, not Tretch, sorry. Um, Clan Mulder playing as Keyslip would be an easier bell. And that's saying something. Look, look at this shit. It's like the Council of 13 decided to be like, you have you have lost your light, uh, right to, to life. Alright, so clan rats coming in. Bloody hell, it's the true vermintide. I wish I had some spells. Well, I do have one, but... Ain't gonna do much. Not against that. Shit on us, 
All right. Okay, let's shoot those guys. Laser weapons firing. And it's time to unleash the destroyers. Not destroyers, but the Kadai at any rate. These hobgoblins are pretty damn nasty when they get to it. The crazy part is like, this is an insane level of Skaven that I'm dealing with and I'm gonna go walk out of this with minimal casualties. guys out reposition there Shoot on them. Oh yeah, and Gordas should be actually used in battle, not just sitting there observing. I doubt he has a problem with just doing nothing. Army losses are certainly starting to kick in over here. Chase them down there. 
Try and get them. What in the world? Damn magic. Pull these guys back. Stop them. Boys and oh. And move these guys ahead. Let's get those Skaven Slave Singers off his back. There's still quite a lot of rats there. I'm getting quite annoyed about these constant ranged attacks on their part. Pull back. Uh, pull back the destroyers there. Or pff, destroyers, the fireball. And try and snipe there. Uh, try and snipe their uh, lords over there. Their bus is doing their thing over there. Now I need to pull them back simply be Wow! That was a bit of a shock, I admit. One is dead. Well, let's chase them down as best we can. Brutal. Up. 
I'll get a better deal from him if I sell him this element in a better condition. Though, I will do something here. Get some more Conclave influence. And over here, get some money. Where is the strategy for the madness? There's simply a strategy. And I can also use some of these laborers to rush the construction over here. And we can either get armaments over in this situation, which obviously would be pretty damn sweet. But um, at the moment, I think I need... Let's see what we can do. I could decide to ignore the rebellion. Wouldn't necessarily be the best decision in my life, but it could work. For Gordas, we get the um, Stabiest, which gives him minus 20% upkeep for Hobgoblin units and exper an experience benefit. We can also improve them in melee and also give them some ammunition benefits. But for now, I think I'm just going to get extra punishment. Always useful to have, always nice to have. Okay. Are we going to be done with those? Damn. The two, two are slow. Well, he's actually... No, he hasn't conquered even his initial province. What the heck is up with those guys? All right, so I've got Noblar Country. I've eliminated this game. You can thank me later for doing that, Greases. No, actually, you can thank me now. So I think... Okay, so convoy completed. We got a bunch of laborers. We can get connected. That just ain't worth it. Infernal Guard can be nice. And obviously this is under my control right now, so let's just get that labor benefit. Gonna be a pretty easy caravan. What's important though with that? Okay, so we got a bit of armaments. Okay, let's see over here. What can I else can I do over here? Okay, increase armament output. And get more money. You're a problem. Problems going to my gut. This is going to be an important part of my Dumping. strategy. Because I need Greases to be on my side. But he does certainly not like me. So, certainly a bit of a an issue. That's pretty sweet. That's a really sweet item. Okay, that's going to be done soon enough. And when it's done, I am going to get the drill. Now, for him, we're going to get cargo put capacity, bare scales. And over here, just wait with Razif. Alright, get more Conclave influence over there for that. I just want to spend my enemies when it comes to Conclave Influence. <laughs> Next up, we move on... on Emmerich, more or less. Moonhowlers and Emmerich. I have enough armaments to increase my warrior capacity. We're going to increase the drill over there. Um, 
shouldn't be too worried about this situation. I can get rid of some of these guys. Tell you what. No, he wouldn't reach it. Okay. So how much do I have? 185. It would take too many turns to build this. Unless I rush it and I don't want to rush it. So three turns to build that. Well. Hmm. Now let's just get a warrior capacity ability. Move Drazif over here. And we're gonna get another unit of chaos. Uh, dwarf warriors and just get rid of a hobgoblin unit. Now research wise we can increase capacity of brazen bulls. What I do want well, what I want, I want a bunch of things, but for now, I'm just gonna go with merchant guilds. This is still some turns away until rebelling. We can also start recruiting for him. Wrong unit. And over here, well, we just wait. Over tyrant knows best. Now, the thing about this alliance that I just made is yep, as you might imagine it, it's gonna put us in contact with the howling one. The howling one being, of course. Grimgore. Well, not necessarily the howling one, but still the annoying one. Okay, let's take the beast over there. Okay, so my army is in a good enough position. Let's just force march our way here. We have enough materials to force production. We have enough gold as well. I know what I'm doing is not terribly efficient there. And that's one of the reasons why I shouldn't should have just raised it to the ground. But I also consider the fact that I would have to give put send an army back there uh, in order to do that. I will see you burn for your So America is still not at war with anyone. He really hates me though. These are war. These guys are war with Clan Rectus. We're just gonna wipe them out. This is my land. Take the Darkhold. Well, where is the Darkhold? That's the real question. Because we see the Pig Barter. We see the Tower of Grief. I guess it's just on the western side of that particular province. Okay. Let's get veteran what convoys. Alright, get another convoy. Oh, <laughs> some of these things are just plainly damn ridiculous. Okay, now I don't have enough money for now, but I will. Hold on. Don't mess with me. Okay. Me. By well in just a moment. Let's 
see over here what kind of movement range he got has. Alright, um, I'm gonna occupy it as a factory. And get rid of this building, because there is no valley over there. And then send the, this fellow right here to the Valerie. If I encounter anything that's quite capable enough of dealing with the damn Kadai destroyer, I'll be shocked. All right, couple more turns. I need to be a bit careful. Let's get more Conclave influence. That one, the way it is right now, is fine. All right, so there's the Dark Hold. I just didn't see it. Still not good enough level to rank up. We're going to boost the income with him. And with Gorda's, we're... Well, we can get shoot him. But I think like just 10% missile strength is just kind of waste with them. Melee attack, however, is a bit of a different discussion, I would argue. Melee defense and missile resistance, eh, kind of one of those things, right? But I'll just get elusive at the moment. Okay. So the drill will be completed in just a moment. That'll give me some production. Now I need to be careful. When I complete that tier 2 uh, drill, I'll get the quest bow. But it may not be worth it to do that quest bow at that particular. Are you guys serious? They are serious. They're very damn serious. Okay, let's produce that. Get this tower to tier 2. The tower of Zara seat has been uncovered. Let's get more income from trade tariffs. I'm so far ahead of my fair low cast dwarf lords that it ain't even funny anymore. Though to be fair, they're probably not they're probably looking at those seats and thinking to themselves, that ain't worth it. They're not wrong. Are these guys at war with him? Beyond me, right? So, I do have the Black Fortress over here. So, I'm not worried. Like, Flayed Rock, for them to attack Flayed Rock, they'd have to go for the Black Fortress. So, I'm probably going to encounter their army directly. Um, wow. Tretch got wiped the hell out by Karakazul. Holy shit, go dwarves. <laughs> I did not expect that particular outcome. Now this is going to be a bit of a problem because... As you might imagine, Karakazul does despise me. Everyone hates me. The Hiles hate me, Karakazul hates me. It's like the fucking Brodio. It's like who can declare war faster on the Chaos Dwarves. You guys aren't nice at all. You know that? Just gonna point it out. All right, we need income over here. He 
is more of that labor force. So we got this special skill line. We can reduce infernal guard, income from cities, faction wide, raw material output. That should go a long way. Though, to be fair, that skill right there that I just picked up is kind of worthless. This one isn't, but this one is worthless until I can get magic. The thing is, I'm not gonna get magic for a while. So this can give me armor, melee attack for cast dwarf, melee infantry oh, units. Wrong. Just don't necessarily have a lot of these. I could buff hobgoblin units, but it's like melee defense and sick leadership is not gonna make these guys better units. Okay, so let's get some cargo capacity. We are four turns away. You, sir, are persistent, you know that? I mean, okay, attack the Black Fortress. By all means, you're gonna have a hell of a time trying to take it. I'll just deal with the rains. Oh, great, when it rains, it pours, doesn't it? It's like everyone's coming for me. <laughs> Everyone. What the heck is going on here? Bloody hell, man. All right. We don't have, we have the Shattered Stone Bay. Um, so I have the following choice. I can either lose graciously. Where is, wait, is Stretch just completely gone? Wow, okay. This is gonna be a rough one. Excellent. You have decided Holy to cowboy. hasten your demise. Child, with the you risk your very life by demanding my time. Let's get the trade Agreed. agreement with Cafe. Ain't no damn joke, that's for certain. So simultaneously, I need to defend the coast from the... Alright, if he attacks me here, he's gonna get get a hell of a beating. Shardstone Bay can probably withstand some damage, but yeah, it's not gonna be a great situation there. Uh, so yeah, rough. Uh, sorcery... Can't go to call to war. Let's go with Envoys of the Conclave. Rough shit. I could sell these two to Imric. Face me on the battle. Oh, he's at war if with Puppet Gargoyle. My friend Imric, join the war effort. Kill the dwarves. Let's kill the dwarves together. <laughs> Oh boy. You know, Emery can have it. If he can stand up to Karakazul, as far as I'm concerned, he can have fresh. all of this damn stuff. Do, do I want to sell this to Emery? He is going to rebel if I don't, so. Oh uh, yeah. Is the Kuz cattle hook to suit your guitar? Wait, who declared war on me? Oh, Karaka Zorn. Sorry, not Karaka Zool. Yeah, it would have been a rough one. Karaka Zorn is no problem. What do you want? Oh, God. When it rains, it pours, I guess. I guess I don't have much of a decision, really. Okay. Not many. Not too many. We need the laborers anyway. Let's move them 
there. Yeah, I know. But we'll solve that situation very shortly. In terms of the labor. Well, if these guys attack, sure, I can handle that. I'm more concerned about that. Damn the army. Let's get that factory to right here. Strolden. Oh, come on. You guys aren't fun. Flex what are you gonna do? Us. Run away. It All the way. Drangi. Yes, he will. Kubelu Kazi. Minu Drazo. So we got the dwarf battle over here. So this particular battle, I am not concerned about winning the battle itself. I am, however, concerned about not taking a significant amount of damage while doing so. Now, my heroes over here, along with my heavy artillery, will go on that side. Uh, well, artillery, my gunpowder units will go on that side, though I'll deploy them at a bit of a distance over here, because I know there's going to be dwarf minor reinforcements over on that side, so we're just going to flank around. We got the labor force uh, going to do a pretty decent job over here, because here's the thing about laborers, they're actually pretty good against uh, heavily armored targets, so they'll actually be able to do quite well in, in this battle. Now, my concern over here... So my concern over here is not the main army over here. Like with the with my goblins, I should uh, be able to just take out their back line, then withdraw over here. I am concerned about not losing too many men because obviously the uh, enemy reinforcements are going to start arriving. So we just got to deal with that. Now the hobgoblins are of course going to lose against the quarrelers. That is... A bit of an unavoidable fact of life, if you will. Yeah, take down the artillery. Do I care even if this if this army of laborers? There we go. Miners incoming, and we get miners with blasting charges. Let's throw Gortus, and let's try and deal with the gyro bomber, the uh, gyrocopters over there. Let them try and run. Right, take them down there. And our goal here is to deal with the artillery of the enemy army. Right, reposition these guys, because apparently... My Fireborn are quite capable of dealing with all these miners on their own. He's gonna chase down that gyrocopter. And yeah. More miners incoming. Alright, keep these guys in check. Okay, let's send them over here. Send him to deal with the situation there. Oh, last group of miners. Okay. Laborers are holding their own over there. I don't really care about uh, about them, but. Um, Alright, that should break them. Let's send Gordus into the fray over here. And 
and try and get these guys in a decent enough position. So these are the last of the miners. Okay. Yeah, there's quite a few of them. Okay. Right, they're broken over there. Let's pull these guys out. His barrier is still going there. Okay, gonna use his magic over here. Alright. Show no mercy. Okay, the battle is over. Captured in battle, the Western kin are slaughtered one by one and offered as sacrifice to Hashut, the father of darkness. The great bull god is pleased with the savage offerings and reveals the locations of eight dwarfen relics. Relics hold great power, yet such strength will not wake in the hands of the Chaos Dwarves. And so the Demon Smiths must corrupt the artifacts, turning them into weapons worthy of Tsar Nagrund. Such potent magic takes a hideous toll on those who wield its might. The halls of Tsar Nagrund are lined with the frozen forms of past sorcerers. Their statues standing in mute testament to the curse of petrification. The blight of all chaos dwarf sorcerers. The cunning and cruelty of demon smiths is equally matched by a voracious greed for knowledge. Further experiments reveal the blood of captive dwarves thickening, a physical toll of their master's dark sorcery. This petrification by proxy is seized on by the coven as a chance to escape the awful curse that hangs over all their tribe. So, victory. Okay, rebellion next. Got a bit of money over there. So, we got the Graves of Dragons over on that side. Not gonna spend the money right now. Though I will get that right now for a moment. So he he's leveled up. Um, we want to get Killing Fire. I want to unlock at least this, right? The Flames of Asgore, because then I can um, upgrade that. Not really interested in anything in this magical skill line, because I'll get. Gonna go with Skirmish uh, Tactics to unlock his last ability. 
And over here, let's get some melee benefits for hobgoblins. Okay, so he's getting the level. Let's get better scales on that side. Okay. All right, so rebellion soon enough. And lizards coming in to attack us. See what's gonna happen. Oh, you little shits! Why you little freaking shits? Alright, so Flayed Rock is under threat. But I can't do shit about it. Let's just move in stealth right there. Can't really transfer. Alright, try and get some upgrades there. We got the tower slot available. So, over here, I mean, I could get income from uh, settlement buildings. I'm going to go for armament output. I am so far ahead of the competition, it's not even funny. Let's try and stop them. And maybe, who knows, maybe the lizards will not prove to be an annoying factor over there. There's no way I win this. Okay, do I have any regiments renowned? Yes, I do. We're gonna move him here. Take back Flayed Rock, you little shit. So we're gonna get rebellions there and there. Now, I can get some cast corruption here, which is going to be needed. Let's get cargo capacity. Convoy did its thing. Let's go with that one. We can get more laborers or... Well, really, laborers would be really damn welcome at this point. Um... That would be 100 and... Alright, this is much faster. So let's just get a bunch of laborers over there. The campaign can't just go my way every time I want it to. <laughs> so I do hope they attack here. That would make things easier. Let's get some control. So we deal with that army there. Should be easy enough. What do you want? Oh, you little... Gonna declare war on me, huh? Yeah, we'll see. Where did he go to?
Well, it's a bit of a shame the ambush failed, but uh, where would he have gone? That is my question. He could have used on the way. I think Pig Barter will be fine. Mino Tiran Bazal Talejinaras Chronic Kazak Tospin Tapazit. Thanks, Jackass. That was really nice of you. I love the AI just being a, uh, an annoying ass about these kind of things. So get the curse of the shoot. Uh, get molten cores. Alright, let's get that ability right there. Now we can get a bit of a stronger garrison over here and it isn't really that expensive so if something does happen over here I should be able to deal with it. Why aren't you guys special? They hate me for taking all the tower seats. <laughs> That's the thing. Alright. Tell you what, I'm fighting this. Because I got this everything here. Alright, so the threat of the Lizardmen has abated. Let me see about a good solid positioning over here. Well, I suppose that is going to be corner camping, because why not? Um, but where? Okay, so the enemy is there. Where do I want to deploy? Where is the damn corner? <laughs> That would be like, I guess, yeah, there we go. I wish them luck. They're gonna need it. I mean, when you throw a Vargulf at your enemy. And you have a dread quake as well. Yeah, the enemy is not gonna stand the chance. I hope they don't stand the chance. To be fair though, this even if I lose this caravan, it's still an ideal outcome for me for the caravan to fight them. Cause that way. Alright, let's throw this this iron demon here closer. Oh, that is a massive labors. Let's just shoot it. <laughs> ah, you gotta love that. Here it comes. Boom. Let's target the Chaos Dwarf warriors there. Let's 
Because those are the only guys that can actually be a genuine threat in that situation. Not for long. Ah, <laughs> uh, you gotta love it. All right, Wolf Rider is coming in. So he hit their Orc laborers where it hurts. Big boom coming in. Oh yeah, makes you wonder if they're even gonna reach my lines. They will, they just got too many troops to not, but it is gonna be a massacre all the same. Look at that Iron Demon go, it's having the time of its life. Don't let them escape. Try and take him down. Well, that was a glorious victory.
That was amazing. Genuinely amazing. Well, my labor shortage has been sorted out. And that's about it, isn't it? What are they gonna do? Try and strike the sentinels? Well, we got an answer for that, don't we? Okay, let's click on drill and see what comes of it. Oh, I was supposed to get the cinematic, but because I clicked the enter, and I didn't get that cinematic. Bit of a shame, all the same, but still, I'll, uh, that is on me. So, Lizard Boys had enough. <laughs> Apparently not. We'll have to deal with them. We? Yes, we will. Don't have enough armaments to increase uh, unit capacity in the Hellforge, so Hobgoblins it is. How much labor did I just get there? Decent amount, sure. Um... Can use for more conclave influence. Let's get some control over there. Get more cargo capacity. All right. We're just gonna have to wait because I don't have the money right now. Ignata do Razang. He's an lock who's a new. He's a. Who's pray? Matum let gorth Kabu Gruta. Okay. That is 25 influence, but I do need. Uh, I do need the benefit right there for control. That's the thing about the castors, they can actually get con control, really good control of their provinces. What do you want? Yeah, my dude, you start a war with Grimgore, you go finish that war with Grimgore. You're on your own on that. That is my perspective, like... You want to fight Grimgore? Go right the hell ahead, I'd say. That is not my damn business. Alright. So, Costine here, signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, enable notifications, and I'll see you boys and girls next time. This is just the first part. 23 turns in, got the pretty solid foundation for an empire. Rebellions are coming in. Um, gonna be happening soon enough, I imagine, over here, if I don't deal with, um, with the situation. Stay tuned.